This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Everyone turn to your neighbor and say, you got a choice. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> See, there's a difference between a moron and an idiot. An idiot is one that does things that doesn't know what the right thing to do is. A moron is one that does. Amen. Glory to God. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Would you go there with me, please? De Deuteronomy. Welcome to Tuesday night training session where we use the Bible as a manual because we're not religious. Amen? I hate religion. Jesus never came to bring religion. He came to bring a military operation. Amen? With training. Amen. But there first must be a willing heart. There's got to be a willing heart. If you're not a willing, you don't have a willing heart, then you're lost. L-O-S-T, living outside of salvation's truth. And the enemy will eventually take you out. And I don't want to see anyone cook in hell. Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me, please? Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. Glory to God. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. How many of y'all know we came from another land? Amen. All of our forefathers came from another land. Amen? Amen? And when our forefathers came from another land, this land originated in Christianity, but then it got infiltrated and polluted. Amen. And it's still being polluted and being infiltrated. Amen? And slowly and slowly and slowly... Wicked traditions began to be passed down through the family lines. In verse 10, there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Now people send their sons and daughters through the abortion. Same thing. Or one who practices witchcraft. People don't even know they're practicing witchcraft when they are. How many of y'all know rebellion is witchcraft? Amen. In fact, witchcraft is associated with using drugs, isn't it? Or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer. Verse 11, read it with me. Or one who conjures spells or a medium or spiritus or one who calls up the dead. Many of us have families that have gone to psychics, soothsayers, and mediums, and used tarot cards. They've tried to get an answer from God through witchcraft. And it brings a curse on the family line, and it gets passed on to us. And until somebody breaks it, amen, that goes on to our children. But still, there's a part where a child has an age of responsibility. Even though a child is brought up, then there's that age of responsibility where the child now can supersede what has been brought down the family line and broke. Well, they can reconnect it again, and it goes down their family line. Hallelujah. In verse 12, for all who do these things are what? An abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which will, you will dis, dispose, the, uh, dispossess, listen to what? Soothsayers and diviners, which those who seek divination, familiar spirits, the dead. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. This is called witchcraft. There are wicked traditions 
passed down family lines. And there are wicked traditions that are still activated. In fact, you and I are seeing wicked traditions at full-blown force right now, globally. Globally. In Second Chronicles chapter 33, Second Chronicles chapter 33. We have been accustomed in the arena of pagan worship. We have been accustomed in witchcraft, wicked traditions that have been placed down lines through government. You know, if you really think about this, if you go down to Washington and all of the federal buildings... Those buildings all represent Egypt, Greek, mysticism. Think about that. All the buildings are associated. Associated with Atlantis. Oh, hallelujah. Second Chronicles 33 and verse 1. Let's read it. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king. Wow, I can imagine somebody becoming president at 12 years old now. Snap. And he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did what? Evil in the sight of the Lord according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So what had happened was there was a cleaning, right? And then when he came into place, he decided to reconnect wicked traditions. Is everybody okay? And verse 3, for he what? Rebuilt high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. He raised up altars for the Baals and made wooden images and he worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. This is what you call aliens. Because they're actually fallen angels. Does everybody get this? He also built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Also, he caused his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He practiced what? Susing, used witchcraft and sorcery, and consulted mediums and spirits. In other words, he used drugs. Because the word pharmakia comes from the word pharmacy, which means black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord to what? To what? Provoke him to what? Anger. He even set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. And I will not again remove the foot of Israel from the land which I have appointed for your fathers. Only, everyone say only. If they are careful to do all that I command them according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. They practiced what we call passing through the fire, abortion. They practice drugs. All things, think about all the things that have been practiced in our lifestyle, in our lifetime and through our families of all kinds of answers of things. People are seeking an answer through horoscopes. People are looking for an answer in a fortune cookie. They have no idea. It brings a curse on them. When you access and touch those things, demons have access to you. You've actually invited them. You welcome them. And they come right into your body. 
and they stay dormant until they need to get fed, then you must practice wickedness. You must practice rebellion because that demon must get fed until it's finally removed. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Look at how many times people used good luck charms. Which brought a curse. They got dream catchers, which are nothing but demon in, uh, invitations for demons. And all kinds of things. Tarot cards and whatever it is. Anything they're trying to get an answer from God, but they're using witchcraft. And God will not answer them. It will open the door to what we call familiar, seducing, seductive spirits. I'm telling you, spirits come, they're called incubus and succubus to promote sexual immoralities. These are demons. And then you have fallen angels that are their gods and goddesses. In the book of Jude, uh, no, let's go to Judges, chapter 2. Remember, all of these things have been in effect before you and I were born. Amen. So when you and I were born, we came into a world where it was normalized, wasn't it? And we talked about this before. So what seems to be normal now in the world is actually wicked works. So when a believer considers these things normal, it actually neutralizes the spirit of God in them. And there's no dominion. Because what we're doing is saying no to God and yes to wicked works or wicked traditions in judges chapter 2 is everybody there in verse 1 would you read it with me then the angel of the lord came up from gilgal to basham and said i led you up from egypt and brought you to the land which i swore to your fathers and i said i will never break my covenant with you and you shall make no covenant with the what? Inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. But they shall be thorns in your side. In other words, they will torment you. And their gods, which are fallen angels shall be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voices and what? They wept. Does everybody see this? Everybody okay? Am I? Praise God. And they did what? Oh, they wept. Powerful. Then they called the name of that place, Basham, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. And when Joshua had dismissed the people, the children of Israel went to each one of his own inheritance to possess the land. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua and had seen all great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died when he was 100 and ten years old. And they buried him within the border of his inheritance in Tamath house in the mountains of Ephraim on the north side of Mount Gasha. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the work which he had done for Israel. I don't get it. Why weren't the families telling them? You know why? Because wicked works of the wicked traditions began to infiltrate and no longer was the talk of how great God was. There was no more longer talk of how to be righteous before the Lord. Do you know that when children were disobedient at that time, if the parents decided to turn them over to the council, they knew that that child would be killed. There was no second chance. They stoned that child to death. Maybe more of that was going on. We wouldn't have been so bad. <laughs> I might have thought twice or just committed suicide. Who knows? 
because I was a maniac. But thanks be to God who rescues us idiots and morons. No, I was an idiot then. I didn't know enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 11, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baals. Baals are fallen angels. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them and provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asherah. Now, listen, these are two fallen angels. One was a goddess and one was a god. In fact, Ashroth, the male part of it, is known uh, uh, as the, uh, whatever, um, I'm trying to think of it. Oh, the Duke of Hell. He is known as the Duke of Hell. In verse 14, read it with me. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, so he delivered into the hands of the plunderers who despoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around so that they sh could no longer stand before their enemies. How many of y'all know the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Has he been stealing from you? He's been killing things, stealing your ID. You're in stealing your integrity. Verse 15, wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had shown to them, and they were greatly what? Distressed. Baals. Let me tell you, during that time of Baals, one of the things that they used to do to conjure up demonic forces, because they used to serve, Baal was a fallen angel. And they would bring demons in by cutting themselves. So people that cut actually invite demonic influence. And again, unless that demon is removed, that person will cut again. Because it must get fed. Does everybody get it? It must get fed. Demons must get fed. And they get fed by emotion. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Training for reigning. Verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be what? Unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ and some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents, nor complained as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as what? Examples. And they were, and they were written for our admonishment upon, admonish, upon whom the what? Ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he what? Lest he what? falls. No temptation has overtaken you except for such as is common to man. But, but God is what? Faithful. Faithful 
who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. If you're what? Hearing. If you're in tune. Other than that, you will not escape it. Verse 14. Therefore what? My beloved, flee from what? All idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. Sexual immorality. Practice. It's called associated with wicked traditions. You know, we have practicing now of sexual things before marriage. I mean, it was, it's been a common thing. And those common things, according to the world, is not common in the kingdom of God. Amen? But thank God for the blood of Christ that washes us when we repent with a true heart. If there's not a true heart, because the word repent means to turn from it. If you're going to repent on a Sunday and go back to practice it on Friday, you're not forgiven. Does everybody get it? Because it means to what? Turn. There must be an active turn from it. In Romans chapter 1. That's if you have a willing heart to want to please God and do the right thing. Romans chapter 1. Is everybody there? Can everybody hear me? Now, I want to hear every one of you. Verse 18. Glory. Romans 1, verse 18. For the what? Wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and an unrighteousness of men who what? Who suppress the truth in an unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is what? Manifest to them, for God has shown it into them shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without what? No excuse. Everyone say, I have no excuse. Verse 21. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were what? Darkened and hardened, bitter. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Look at this. Who what? Exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the what? Creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to what? Vile passions. For even their women exchanged their natural use for what is against nature. In other words, women with women. Actually, and women with animals. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of women, burned in their loss for one another. Men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving themselves a penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God or his truth in their knowledge, God gave them over to the base mind to do those things which are not fitting being filled with all what? Unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of what? Envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, 
who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of what? Death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Now, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? So if somebody approves abortion and same-sex marriage and you vote for him or her, blood's on your hands because you approve of it. Does everybody understand that? Blood is on our hands and we will have to be accountable before God. In fact, it says you will be judged the same way that you, what you approve of. That's pretty wild, isn't it? Can you imagine doing the right thing all of your life, but you're approving of things that are wicked? That's not the right thing then, is it? So you approve of abortion. You approve of same-sex marriage. You approve of sex before marriage. You approve of fornication. You, you approve of pornography. You approve of it. Well, you'll be judged the same way someone who practices it. Amen? That means there's no entrance into heaven. Hmm. Wicked traditions enticed. And they're enticed and introduced by fallen angels and their offsprings. Right now, again, we are seeing full-blown manifestations all over. Look at hatred all over. In Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. Wicked traditions. Do you think we need to know these things? Well, I have good news. And bad news. The good news is now that you begin to know them, it brings light and now you can use them. The bad news is if you don't, you're in trouble. Amen? Joshua 7, verse 1. Let's speak it together, okay? Okay. But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. Ooh. For Achan, the son of Kamar, the son of uh, Zabadah, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took of the what? Accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ah, which is beside beth Evan, on the east side of Bethel. And spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ah. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up, but let about what? Two or three thousand men go up and attack Ah. Do not worry all the people there, for the people of Ah are what? Few. So they expected to just kick butt. So about 3,000 men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ah. And the men of Ah struck down about 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebron and struck them down on the descent before the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. He and the elders of Israel... And they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought us, this people, over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. You got to remember, the Lord is one that sent them out to battle. Amen? When God sends you out to battle, you win. Unless there's an accursed item. You lose. Verse 8. O oh Lord, what shall we say when Israel turns back before the enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, 
Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they became, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you what? Does destroy the curse from among you. He said, get up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow because Thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families, and the families which the Lord takes shall come by households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. Then it shall be that he who has taken the accursed thing shall be what? Burned with fire, he and all he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. Accursed items are things also that even if something has been used for evil, it becomes an accursed item. You can have a nice brand new car right from the factory. And if you use it to get high in, if you use it to fornicate in, it becomes an accursed item. Same thing with a phone. If you use that phone for wicked works, to set up wicked works, it becomes an accursed item. And you cannot defeat your enemy. He will always overtake you. Does everybody get this? Same thing with your computer. Anything to that degree, anything that is used for wickedness is called an accursed item. And accursed items draw demonic activity. You know, think about when we were out partying and using and whatever. There'd be times when you want to quit, but you wouldn't throw away the paraphernalia. You'd hide it. And you'd be attached to it all the time, no matter what. Same thing with that bottle of booze or, or the cigarettes. The cigarettes are accursed items also. Always attached so you can't, you know. Just it's constantly tormenting you. So even when these things become accursed items, you know what happens? They torment you, that you must use it to practice. Does everybody understand that? How many of you know a person can become an accursed item? Amen. How about music, radios, TV? Does everybody get it? These things that are used for evil become accursed items. Is everybody okay? And you cannot defeat your enemy. Amen? Many accursed things are handed down family lines. You know, in other countries, especially people come to Florida and go to other places and they buy souvenirs, don't they? Think about this. I have seen crosses that were placed curses on. Jewelry and rings, messianic things. All kinds of t-shirts, clothes. Man, you got to check things. You'll find that even underwear has got skull and crossbones on them which means death. Those are accursed items. And you cannot defeat your enemy. If it's used in rebellion, rebellion is witchcraft. It's practicing wickedness, isn't it? See, people don't get this stuff because they can't see spiritually. They can't understand. And it's time that the body of Christ awaken and people awaken to see what is the influence because the influence is not physical. It's unseen. That's why people are tormented. Where? In their thoughts. And then they play with emotions. What are they trying, demons trying to do? Stir up an emotion to what? Get fed. Amen? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4. So what happens in these um, souvenirs and stuff, children in other countries, when you, if you look at seeing some of the stuff is coming from Africa, China, whatever, you got all these souvenirs that are made. Well, what happens for these children to get fed, they are required to place curses on these items. Next thing you know, you got this conch shell in your house and you're having a problem. 
Does anybody get this? You got this piece of jewelry you bought from somewhere else. Handmade from Haiti. Uchawawa. You better break that curse off. You people are buying furniture that a curse has been placed on them. See, you go through your house and you command in the name of Jesus anything that's been purchased. Everything we get donated to us, we break every curse off. Jewelry, everything. We don't know where it's been. Even when you go, you know, when you go sleep somewhere in a, in a hotel, whatever, man, you break the curse off that bed, command those spirits to leave. I've told you many before about the story when I went to, I was on a trip and um, I, w I went to go do some ministry stuff and uh, man, I was in this hotel and these two huge shadows came in at about midnight and I could sense such lust. It was such lust. It was overpowering me and I'm like, and I began to bind the spirits. I plead the blood of Jesus and these things booked. And I turned over. I went to go to sleep. And it wasn't over with. I could still sense that evil presence. And I got up and said, okay. Holy Spirit, what's up? Show me what's up. He said, search the drawers. I began to pull drawers out. He said, search the bottom one. Pull it all the way. I pulled it all the way out. And there were penthouse and playboy books underneath. I said, okay, well, I'm going to do this. Get rid of them, all right? I'm thinking, what do I, you know... And what am I going to walk out of a ho hotel room and throw it out somewhere so you see me walking with a Playboy book or penthouse, you know? So I, I found some paper, wrapped it up in it, and I snuck down the hallway, <laughs> threw it away, broke the curses off. No, I didn't open the pages. I had no desire to. See, when you're free from these things, you don't have a desire to do them. But when the spirit is still there, you have a desire. Amen. Oh, glory. Ephesians chapter 4, is everybody there? Oh, hallelujah. In verse um, 25. Ephesians 4, 25. What does it say? Therefore, putting away lying. So if you're a liar, are you a cursed person? Yeah, you become an accursed item if you're a liar. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not what? Sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil, nor give place to the devil. Say, everyone, everyone say, nor give place to the devil. I'm not going to give place to the devil. How many of you all know that when you make a vow and you don't fulfill it, it's called a lie? Did you ever do something by mistake and say, look, I'll be there at 10 and show up at 10, 15? You lied. Oh, well, God knows I'm, I mean, you know, God, yes, he does. I'm telling you one day, the Holy Spirit tapped me on the shoulder and said, God, you need to repent unfulfilled vows. I said, what do you mean? He said, every time you said you were going to do something and didn't, it brings a curse on you. I went, whoa, unfulfilled vows. We got a powerful teaching on that. Now that's in your bedtime prayer booklet. So when you go to bed, you repent for any unfulfilled vow because many times you do it by mistake. Amen? But you got to remember that the enemy is a high power Organized crime attorney. His organization is nothing but crime. Amen? And he knows loopholes. And he knows how to access God's children. Because what he does is he entices them. Look, he can't put a curse on you, but he can cause a person to put a curse on himself. Because a curse without a cause is no effect. Glory. All right? Let's go a little further. Nor give place to the devil. Verse 28, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, 
but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit. How many times we grieve the Holy Spirit when we open our mouth? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Listen, people don't realize that you can become unsealed. Hello? Amen? You can become unsealed. You break covenant, you're unsealed. There's no longer a seal there. That seal represents you're his. But when you break covenant, you're his. Don't die in that condition. Hallelujah. Verse 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. Oh, make no place for the devil. Psalm 141. Wicked traditions. You know, the word says something very powerful. It says, bad company corrupts good habits. Amen? So your associations will bring impartations. Let's speak it. Lord, I cry to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense, the lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a what? Guard, O Lord, over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to do any evil thing. To practice what? Wicked works with men who do iniquity. And do not let me eat of their what? Delicacies. Let the righteous what? Strike me. So if you feel a slap in the back of your head, God bless you. Let the righteous what? Strike me. It shall be a kindness. Let him rebuke me. It shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. For still my prayers against the deeds of the wicked. It's amazing it's in how many people get rebuked or they get angry or offended. When God is just trying to bring counsel, correction, and direction. For still my prayers against the deeds of the what? Of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff and they hear my words for they are sweet our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave and as one plows and breaks up the earth but my eyes are what upon you O god the lord and you do i take refuge do not leave my soul destitute that means do not allow my soul to go into captivity many people don't even know that their soul is in captivity Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their what? Oh, and that's why I what? Escape safely. Escape safely. Don't incline my heart to do evil. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Amen. Verse 1. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. My soul you have said to the Lord, you are my God, my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. For as for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Their sour shall be multiplied, who what? Hasten after another God or fallen angel or idols. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer. Look at what, how much now you see of vampires and people drinking blood and all kinds of stuff like that. Why? Because these traditions have become full-blown. Wicked traditions. Now they're promoted on TV. Witchcraft is promoted on TV. I see some ridiculous stuff, man. It blows me away. People cursing one another and Anyways, it's plum crazy. I, I, I'm amazed at what I see on TV sometimes. Turn in the station. 
It's like, what the heck is this? Really? They allow this on TV now? Why? Because the fallen ones now run it. They now run the media. Everything has been placed. It's preparation for the return of the Antichrist. That's why God has rescued you. Soldiers. Is everybody okay? Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and in my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Second Peter chapter 2. Wicked traditions. Look at all the religious things that are practiced. Wicked traditions. Santeria. Praying to the dead. Look at how many times that when we were ignorant out there. Idiots out there. Amen. When we used to pray to talk to grandma or grandpa or somebody who was dead. People still praying to uh, Sister Mary. Uh, you know, Virgin Mary. And it brings a curse on them because it's called necromancing. Anyone who prays to the dead or communicates with the dead, I don't care if it's your mother, your grandmother, your sister, whoever, you're communicating with someone from the dead. As a matter of fact, they don't answer you, and it's not them. Those are familiar spirits that are speaking to you, and you are allowing them to access you. And they're going to want a meal. Everybody okay? I mean, it wasn't my sister that spoke to me? No. My grandmother said I was doing really good. It's a demon. Even Satan comes as an angel of light. And even Satan has ministers that come as righteous ministers. But they told me what was going to happen, and it happened. Yes, because they created it to happen. You just didn't see it all get set up. Oh, hallelujah. Second Pete, is everybody there? Chapter 2, in verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. But there were also what? False prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of the truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has been idle and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of ungodliness and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous Lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wickedness uh, for righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. What were the lawless deeds? Perversion, homosexuality. Then the Lord knows how to what? Deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment of the day of judgment, and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Why? Because God's going to take care of them. But these, like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption. 
and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. There are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are cursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Barar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water clouds carried by tempests for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle in them and overcome the latter and is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of the righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and his soul having washed to her wallowing in mire. Practicing evil, unrighteousness, wicked traditions that are common to the world. In James chapter 4, James 4. Is everybody okay? James chapter 4. Hallelujah. A person either comes to a place of repentance or their heart gets hardened. In verse 1. James 4, verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your what? Desires for what? Pleasure. That war in your what? Members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You want to be an enemy of God? Then you can't be a friend of the world. Or do you think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace, therefore God says, God what? Resist the proud and but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, what? Submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So if you don't submit to God, can you resist the temptation? No. Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves into the sight of the Lord and he will lift you. You up. Ephesians chapter 4. There are three major enemies, unseen enemies, that we must be recognizing. The first one, of course, we know is fallen angels. The second one is their offsprings, is the demons. And the third one is your old man. Everybody get it? And I'm not talking about your spouse or your boyfriend. I'm talking about your old man. The old man in you. The one that's supposed to be crucified. He may not be seen, but it's evident that he's there. Amen? So don't be looking around the room like, who's the old man? Is he here? No. He's here. Get ye behind me. Keep them there. Keep them crucified. Three unseen enemies is what? Fallen angels. Their offsprings, 
and your old self, known as your old man, your old person, your old lady, whatever you want to call it. He's actually known as the devil. That's why when we were little kids, we used to go, you little devil. We were actually devils. We were evil spirits with a body, right? Now, demons are disembodied spirits that need a body. Ephesians 4. Is everybody there yet? Verse 17. Hallelujah. Therefore, this I say, therefore, and testify what? Come on, speak it with me. In the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being what? Alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct of what? The old, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the what? The new man which was created according to God and true righteousness and holiness. Stay tentative in the area and sensitive. Consistency is essential. That's how alertness comes. Don't compromise. Don't be a man pleaser. Just because somebody else approves of something that's not right, don't you do it. Amen? You'll be judged in the same way. It's time to grow up and mature. There's a process in it. What you practice is what you become. But practice makes perfect. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray tonight, Lord, for not only discernment, but vision, that we may see those things in the wicked traditions as you continue to expose them, that you may expose the cursed items, and that you would break every heart that's hardened so there can be reconciliation and reconnection to your love. Because that's what we're looking for. Your love and your presence. And we promise to give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.